Hi, it's Captain Matt, Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon, and today we're going to talk about where are you going to store your boat? So you're in the boat shopping process or you just bought a boat, where are you going to keep it? What are the options? What are the pros and cons of each? So you've got a marina, either a dry stack where they put it in and out with the forklift, or a wet slip where you're tied up in the water, maybe on a lift, maybe in the water, depends on your style of boat in the marina. Maybe you're on the trailer, you can store it in a building, you can put it in just a gravel storage lot, um, or maybe there's a marina that has storage lot where you're right next to the right next to the water access. And then in my opinion, the absolute best option is if you live on the water, you've got it on a lift in your home dock. Now, I'm making this video because a buddy of mine just bought a lake place and we were talking about, should I put it on a lift, not? Uh, should I leave it in the marina that it's at? Should we do a trailer? We were having this conversation. So I wanted to give you my opinion of the pros and cons. Marinas versus trailers, obviously the marina is gonna be much more expensive on an ongoing basis. So you've got you know, 2,000 to 5,000 a year for your marina. If it's a wet slip, maybe even more depending on where you are. On a trailer, you buy that trailer once and you're paid. All you've got, you know, your storage, if you have to pay for the, is going to be much less expensive, maybe $500 to $1,000 a year, depending on where you're located. That's going to be the choice of convenience, of being right at the water, drive there, hop on my boat and go, versus saving some money, but having to hook it up, trailer to the boat ramp, deal with the boat ramp. If you struggle at the ramp, you can check out my Trailer Like a Pro um, program, trailerlikeapro.com, dealing with all of that headache and, and other people that don't know what that should invest in that program uh, and going through all that, the parking, the weight, you've got to balance that out, your budget, and then the accessibility in your area. I always tell people in my in my book, I actually talk about it, Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon. You can get that for free um, at um, on the website. But you've got to make the decision of where do we want to store it, but then you've got to make sure there's availability, especially with dry stack and wet slip storage. Hey, there is a limited amount in every area um, it is not uncommon to call a marina and say, hey, I'd like to get in there. Nope, we don't have any spots available and our waiting list is 100 people deep. Same thing for dry stack storage. So just because that's what you want and you can afford it doesn't mean that it's necessarily available. So start that research early in the process so you don't get yourself in a situation where you're like, crap, I've got the perfect boat, but I have nowhere to put it, okay? Now, the lift, no lift situation, it's gonna be dependent on the style of boat you have and the type of drive you have and the type of water that you're in. For me, the lift is always the best option. If you have the ability to put your boat on a lift, in a slip, that's gonna be the ultimate uh, because it's easy to access, um, you can cover it up. Hopefully you've got a roof in most, most areas. That's a great idea. Sometimes at the coast, it's not a possibility or doesn't make sense. Uh, but that's going to be the most convenient and the best way to go. The problem with leaving most boats in the water, if it's a stern drive, um, if it's a jet boat, are you have maintenance issues to deal with. And obviously in most areas, you're gonna to wanna to paint the bottom of your boat if you're leaving it in the water for extended periods of time. So, you know, several months at a time. All of that adds up to sometimes leaving it in the water, you don't have to pay for the lift, but you have ongoing maintenance requirements. And like I talked to my buddy James is, hey, this is a second home for you. What happens when you aren't at your, at your lake place for two months and a muskrat comes in and chews some of your bellows and now your water your boat's taken on water and you don't even know it and it's been underwater for for two months before you you find out about it um, those are some things that happen when you leave a stern drive in the water if you leave a jet boat in the water well you can get growth in your nozzle system in your jet drive system especially in salt water it can start happening within days uh, within hours in some areas if the water is real warm so you have to be very very aware of the style of boat you have the type of water that you're in and if that option even is available to you or makes sense so weigh all of the pros and cons of, of cost up front 
and cost on an ongoing basis and then the risk of what's the bad things that can happen if I leave this type of boat in the water, this type of water for this period of time. On the trailer side, for me growing up, we kept our boat in the driveway. It's free, uh, convenient. Uh, as far as being a trailer boater, you hook up and you go to the ramp. Work great for us. If you have that option, it can be a fantastic option. You always have your boat there to clean it and do your projects and you can always check on your baby all the time. It's nice and simple. The next is if you can keep it in a building somewhere. Obviously having accessibility to that building, um, the cost of it could be, you know, could be prohibitive. Uh, maybe it's not convenient, but that's a great option is to keep it inside, keep that sun off it. Um, and then the storage lot. Hey, what's the access look like to that? Uh, if I wanted to, if I decide to go fishing at four in the morning, can I get in? Is there a gated code? If I come back at midnight, can I get it in? And what's the lighting situation? So think about the whole situation the convenience of where it's located to where the boat ramp is, uh, where you live, all of those things could come into play. And then obviously the, the cost associated with it and the security. You know, you're probably gonna have some gear on the boat. You've got some electronics maybe. Uh, is some knucklehead gonna try to get into that facility and, and take your boat? So talk to other people that have used that facility to see how secure it's been. And then some marinas will allow you to, hey, we don't have any wet slips. We don't have any dry stack available, um, but we'll let you park your trailer in our lot and you can now um, go right from the marina, drive to the marina, hook up, put it in, park your trailer back in its spot. That's a convenient option if you have that available. And then, like I said, your home dock on a lift is to me, that's the ultimate situation. Uh, you just walk out your back door, pull off the cover, and you go. So hopefully that gives you some ideas of what it's going to look like. For many people, it's going to come down to availability, cost, and convenience. Somewhere in that triangle, you're going to be able to figure out what's right for you. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you've got specific questions, leave them down below. It may lead to making a, a very specific video about lifts and no lifts or about leaving a stern drive in the water. Or, um, so leave those questions down below. I'll try to give you a good answer, maybe even create a whole new video for you that will be valuable. Uh, if you're looking at buying a boat, if you're still in that process, grab the Boat Buyers Toolkit, totally free, boatbuyerstoolkit.com. If you're new to boat ownership, um, do yourself a favor and go check out our free uh, boat, our, our free boaters boot camp, uh, boaterbootcamp.com uh, will get you there. It's totally free. It's a three part series information that every boat owner needs to know. Um, and you'll be glad you got that. They're both free. You'll love them. Uh, give this a thumbs up and remember life truly is better on a boat.